And from myself and Panda here in the tent, we will see you on safari shortly. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to all the kids. It's the kids drive and they are welcome to a very very wet Juma this afternoon. It is pouring with rain here in the Sabi Sands as you can see right in front of us and uh, well I'm already quite soaked so it's just one of those things. Anyway good afternoon to all the kids. My name is Cedric and behind the camera with me oh no Rusty we've got Muscles and Paul and his teddy bear. So yes uh, it's going to be quite a difficult afternoon but it's alright. We are sitting at one of the beautiful dams here in the Sabi Sands here in the northern Sabi Sands and on the northeastern corner of the property and uh, well we've got some hippos that's always a nice thing to start off with some hippopotamus whole pot of them whole family lovely well they're joining us on the kids a drive this afternoon on a wendy we've got uh, chad and uh, panda and all the way down i'm hoping that uh, i'm a color in the eastern cape uh, i'm hoping that it's quite uh, dry that side you never know but yeah eric and morgan will be catching up with you from that side and our amazing team in Johannesburg. Our two directors for this afternoon is Gwyn and Tadiwa. And our tech is uh, Sapiwe. This is live, this is interactive. So kids, if you've got any comments or any questions you want to send through to us this uh, afternoon, please do so. We are waiting for all the comments and questions. But wow, 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 it is pouring with rain. It is... Uh, well, it was expected, so we just made our way to this dam. We're just going to hunker down here at the dam for all, for the time being. There's no point in moving around now because we are going to get way too wet. Mm. Randy, 11 years old. Well, you can still go on safari. Um, it's, uh, you know, you just must make sure that you got yourself a little rain jacket with you or a poncho. And well, you're always going to get wet, no matter what. You can put anything on, you are going to get soaking wet from the rain, especially with this kind of rain, if it's a downpour. Um, but you know, for us, luckily, we've got our rain roof on. So if now and again, you'll see a pole, you'll see the roof above my head. So at least it's keeping us a little bit dry while we are stationary. That's going to be the best thing for now. I am not going to move anywhere. As, and we've got nice hippopotamus as you can see a nice oh so see that little head that came up there so that's a little baby so it's mom and a calf and that calf is very small i'm not too sure how old that calf is now it's a, not that one there's another one that's just in front i think it is a poor i don't think so i don't think she was so pink around the eyes hmm. i'll just have to double check there but there is a little calf here amongst uh, the adults and that one is a few months old oh it's so cute no matthew 11 years old no hippo cannot stay underwater all day long they will drown they're like us they've got lungs they need to come up to the surface to take in the oxygen the nice fresh air and then they go down so it's like when you go Ooh. See Matthew, they are agreeing. See, they say yes, Cedric, oh, Cedric, 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 yes, Cedric, 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 Cedric. <laughs> I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure they said that. <laughs> but yeah, no, they have to come up. So you'll find like a hippo, maybe, maybe a hippo will keep uh, like uh, hold its breath for. A few minutes, not long, and then it has to come up again to take in the, some oxygen. So they're not, they don't have gills, they're not fish. They are mammals. So if you think about, they, the closest relative is the whale. So if you think about a whale, 
in the sea, in the ocean. Same thing. So that whale has to come up. It's got that little blowhole on top of its head. So it's also like blow out a little bit of air and take in a huge gulp of oxygen and then go under again and come up again. That's the closest relative is the whale. It's a whale with legs. Anyway, I think let's go take a look at this interesting weather for this afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. You are here with us at Amakala Private Game Reserve in Eastern Cape, South Africa. Good afternoon everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, it says, it's a beautiful afternoon, myself, my name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera, and this afternoon we're gonna be your eyes and ears. It's a very warm afternoon, but also very windy 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 afternoon here so we are going to try our very best to look to find and to relocate only the best and the funniest animals we have here just like the weather says it is partially cloudy here wow i can see there are some rather grumpy clouds rolling in to our atmosphere ones that look like they hold rain in them but we, we we hope that it doesn't rain we've been so lucky we've been lucky so far actually that uh, i think we deserve to to continue this lucky streak of no rain in the afternoon however that will not affect us we will still push forward as we are scanning here we are overlooking what could potentially hold some lovely animals to go and look at. Tom, some of them do. If you're a baby bird and you're learning to fly, yes, you can get blown away. You can get blown away indeed. But for the, some of the animals on the floor, it depends how big you are. The smaller ones can potentially stand the chance of being blown over, but maybe not blown away. Whereas uh, the older ones and the bigger ones will stand, will stand strong in the wind. But this wind is, it's, it's powerful. It's a powerful wind, but it's not too powerful to do any major damage to anybody. Although it is enough to lift dust. And dust can be uncomfortable if it goes into your eyes, especially if it goes into your eyes. That is why it is always important to have a pair of glasses with you when you are on drive. Because not just dust can go into your eyes, flies and other insects as well. And it can also protect your eyes from the sun. A very, very, bad glare that the sun can let off can sometimes be uncomfortable glasses can soothe that oh i think we're going to be losing our sun in a bit i can feel that heat is not quite as hot as it was and that's because a cloud is now going in front of it Are all the trees different from each other? Yes. Yes, they are, Chloe. And that is why you see different colors. You'll see lighter greens, you'll see darker greens, and then sometimes you'll see some browns. I don't see any browns here. I see some gray. And those would be the trees that are almost pretty much dead. And you can thank the elephants for that, for pushing them over. And then we've got some lighter colored trees those would be your common guari trees and your xersia trees. And then we've got the darker trees, which can be your, your milkwood trees and your 
hairy star apples, and you know, all sorts. There's all sorts here. There's plenty of species, lots of space for birds. And this is where sometimes birding can be good if the birds sit still for long enough to identify them. And sometimes birds don't always, don't always sit still. It's a lovely afternoon. Calvin, indeed, indeed, there are lots of monkeys in the trees there. I haven't seen monkeys here in quite some time, I must say, but I know there are monkeys here. I've seen them all, well, they, we used to be able to see them all the time. I think the time may be different, or they may have moved different trees, but, Monkeys do sleep in the trees over there. We just got to find where the troop is hiding nowadays. And there's something I have noticed that we haven't been able to see recently is monkeys. Huh. So far, I can't see any animals. It seems to be very quiet, but we will take a little bit of a drive and have a look-see. This is On Safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. The little black thing that you see on the screen is a Nile monitor and it is just swimming from one side of the dam and it looks like it wants to head to, wants to, head to the other side and it's amazing it's actually that it's actually amazing to see them quite active like this at the moment because usually on a very cold and rainy day you know, they tend to not be um, as active as if it's a hot sunny day so a hot sunny day because they are cold blooded just like the crocodiles and that all the reptiles cold blooded you need to warm up your body by using the sun called ectothermic and uh, this is funny that you're finding this Nile monitor actually swimming out on a rainy 
rainy afternoon. But that's nice, nice to see. I wonder where it's off to. I think it's maybe going to head towards one of these dead trees here. There's a dead tree that's actually fallen into the water. And yeah, sometimes it might pick up on some kind of food. Yeah, maybe, Gwen, maybe it'll come out for us. Let's see. I've got a feeling it is going to come out for us. Not a big one. It's not a very, very big one. You can just see, just keeping the head above the water. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Ah, there it goes. Hopefully he's going to come out there. Come on! A very, very powerful muscular tail. So, swinging it from side to side to actually get momentum going forward. Nah, it looks like it's just stopped there now. I, oh, there it's moving again. Yeah, it might end up going to that dead, dead tree. And a lot of the birds hate them. Why they do? Why they hate them so much is because these Nile monitors will actually go along and actually feed on some of the eggs of the birds, or even uh, they will go for um, little chicks as well. And then you'll find that they're not, well, they're not happy with that. So I think he might be looking for something to snack on. Or, very important, nice thing to as well for afternoon with uh, rain: amphibians, frogs, and uh, toads. Hmm. Might look, might look for that now. B Bolivia, nine years old. Yeah, very good swimmers. They got fantastic, uh, as I say, uh, swimming uh, abilities. Uh, it's going to get onto that log there. Come on, you can come out the water now. Yeah, it might get out. It might come out. It's got the head on top there now. Just maybe resting a bit. Right. Looks like he's not doing. There, there, there. Oh, um, that's a very small one, it's not a big one. They can get. They're one of the largest of all the monitor lizards that you get here. They get to at least about two meters. Big, and powerful reptiles. Yeah, he's just searching for maybe something. I think for the frogs, I can start, I start hearing the frogs coming out now. There are a lot of frogs. I can hear them quacking in the background now. And uh, I think that's exactly what it's busy looking for there. Maybe some maybe sand, well, sand frogs, maybe grass frogs. Rain frogs as well. Plenty of rain frogs around, but I'm hoping we'll find some. Uh, he's gone there. All right, so he looks like he's going a little bit further into that little thick area there, but we'll keep our eyes open. Ooh, <coughs> well, we sit here and still hunker down here. Just to stay out of uh, the rain and out of the wetness. Uh, let's head over to Amakala as Eric has got some beautiful elephants that he wants to show you. We have some elephants here now. And uh, wow, we didn't know that they were going to be here. This is a surprise, a lovely surprise. I'm very happy that they've come to our neck of the woods. And um, they seem to be coming, well, not a bit closer, but uh, they, uh, they are moving in, in the direction that we want them to be going to. All right, um, this is a sighting that people are wanting to get to. And someone has just tried to contact me before we arrive so I'm just going to answer them and tell them exactly where these elephants are so that we can enjoy our silence and not be interrupted. Bulela, I'm standing by for you, send your message. Buda, I'm currently at the junction of Squeaky, South and Isid. If there isn't any other station, 
man. Please make my way. Yeah, if it, mm, there's no other stations interested, I'm the only one here. Make your way and as a belief, take control, please. <laughs> okay, brother. Sure. All right. I'm not too sure how many of them here. It looks like the whole herd is here. My goodness, the wind <laughs> is out of control. What? Yes. Yes, we do. Quite often, actually, more often than you would think. Um, you know, elephants are just like us, so they, they every now and then enjoy a little, you know, playing, playing around, especially the youngsters. The young elephants love playing around with each other. And they'll chase each other around. But uh, then you'll also get some of the elders. The males sometimes annoying the females. I've seen it where uh, I've, the two females, two big females, have chased one big bull. Now, this big bull was bigger than both of those females. Those females were so upset or so angry, they were chasing this big male. And they were running around in circles, running through trees. Yo, when elephants are running, you know, if they see a tree and they want to run over it, they will run the tree over. It is quite exciting to see. Uh, there, there are quite a few of them here. I think this is our whole herd. I'm just surprised how they got here because... Oh, it's a bit of a surprise, but we're not going to get upset about it. No, we're more than happy to have them up here. Please feel, feel free to stay here as long as you want.
here we've got some. Oh, you can see just how how strong the wind is by looking at those trees dancing to their favorite tunes. Sasha, mm, in my experience, no, not really. They'll make other noises when they are excited. Um, well, it depends, you know, trumpeting has a whole host of meanings. It can mean uh, angry, it can mean they're sad, it can mean that they, you know, uh, uh, sympathetic. But I, I do see, you know, when they're happy, when they're happy, they do more kind of, uh, they run around in circles. When you hear elephant trumpet, it's normally, not always, not always, but normally not a good thing. Um, it could uh, sp specify that someone is angry or upset. Most of the time, that's why they trumpet. Good afternoon to all the kids that are watching and also everybody else that's tuned in. How amazing to start off with a small little Crested Franklin. Well, two to be exact. My name's Chad. On camera today we've got Panda. And we are out and about on Wendy. Seeing what we can find. And Eric was just talking about how the elephants normally will hide within those areas and these two small little crested franklins were actually hiding underneath mom so i think they were just being protected by the rain it is uh still drizzling quite substantially here on juma i mean i'm on the western side uh cedric's on the eastern side of juma and we don't have a set plan for this afternoon just yet we're gonna be bumbling around seeing what we can find and answering as many questions and comments as we can so please do send them through to us but uh we've been about around out sorry for a couple of minutes Uh, Chris, indeed, you are correct. So, when it rains, a lot of the birds get very, very heavy. And with the, them getting a lot heavier, they then don't fly. So, I mean, birds like vultures, those very, very big birds, they don't fly when it's raining because they're too heavy. There's no thermal. So, when I say a thermal, it's when the hot air will rise and it will create this sort of vacuum that pulls them up into the sky in order to then go and look for food that they can scavenge on. There's no thermals when it's raining, so it's also very, very difficult for them to fly. But shame, that Franklin doesn't look too happy right now. I can only imagine how it is feeling. But if I was at Franklin, I would go and hide in maybe a, a thicker area, maybe in thick bush to try and get out of the rain. It's literally standing in a puddle. Shame. But it was amazing to see the small little Franklins. And I think let's continue. Let's... Uh, see if we can find anything else but we're gonna get back on the move i think this afternoon this afternoon it's a little bit about oh so ray you asking if these birds eat worms so these birds won't eat worms so they'll feed on um small little insects they'll feed on seeds and things like that Birds that will feed on worms are often birds with very big, long, thin bills. So, say for instance, uh, hardy dar ibis. 
It's quite a common bird that we see around here. It's got a very long, narrow bill. And that bird then uses that long, narrow bill to get into the dirt in order to then pick out those worms. Also, birds that you might find around water, they often will feed on worms. It's because it's nice and soft, the soil around water. It's easier for them to get their bill into the, the soil and they're then able to feed on those worms. But I was just saying before that question came in that I think the game plan for this afternoon will be to drive as many roads as possible to cover ground. Um, it's going to be tough uh, when it rains there. They like to spend time in thicker areas. I mean, I would be doing ex the exact same if I was an animal out in the African bush. So, so we will do just that. And just saw some mouse birds fly off, which is a, a bird that's got a very long tail. And it almost looks like a mouse when it's on the ground moving around. It was the red-faced mouse birds. I heard them calling as they flew off. But for now, I'm going to continue on our bumble and I'm going to send you over to Cedric and see what's happening. <coughs> Thank you, Chad. Um, I left the dam now because there was a little bit of a break in the rain and I thought, okay, well, let's... Uh, Let's use the break in the rain and uh, move on and see what else we can find. But then it just started raining again. But I've got uh, my plan for the afternoon. I'm, I'm just I'm just working the eastern side of a, a dam called uh, Gauri Dam. So that dam, there was a leopard this morning called Marips, a young male leopard. He was at the dam at four o'clock this morning, and then he came into this direction. So I just want to see if I can pick up on anything of him, but you must also remember tracking now is almost impossible because all the tracks have been washed away by the rain. So we won't even see. If we do see a track, then you know that leopard was here minutes ago. And then it's going to be very, very, very fresh. Very fresh. But now I'm just doing this little area just to see if we can get lucky. Maybe he might be lying in, up in a tree somewhere for us. Never know. Yes, Calvin, 10 years old Calvin. Yes, the leopards will hide in trees. They'll not hide in trees, but they will go up in a tree and, you know, take cover in a nice canopy there, like under the canopy of the tree. Or they will actually go and uh, hide under a bush, a nice thick bush. They'll go and, uh, you know, and uh, rest and keep dry. Now, I think about leopards and lions, they're not too keen to get wet. They're not too keen, but, but, contrary to that, in other words, I have seen leopards walking in the rain. I have seen lions walking in the rain. You know, you can't say, oh, it's raining now. I'm not going to hunt. I'm very hungry, but I can't hunt because it's raining. No, they will still go. If they're hungry and there's an the opportunity, they are going to go for it. So it's not going to stop them. So that's what I say. We might still see a leopard walking around here. Might see one lying up in a tree, maybe one in the drainage line. Or we might see some froggies. I'm looking for some frogs. I'm getting to some of the pans here. <clears throat> Hasn't rained as too much as, as of yet. So, but I'm gonna try and listen out for some of the frogs, maybe some rain frogs that's gonna be running across the road. Um, yeah, little stream frogs, grass frogs. There's so many different frog species that we do get here. But you all hear them. That's what. Uh, that's a big thing. That's the key in frogging. We call it frogging. If you're going to do frogging, you go to some of these little marshy areas, those little wet areas, and you stop there and you listen out. And if you hear them, then you know that there's frogs in that area or close to that water. So, oh, sorry, poor. Yeah, I dra dragged him poor through a. A wet bush here. Matthew, I have seen lions crossing the river. 
I have seen that there in the west. I've seen lions crossing the river. So yes, I have seen that. Leopards I haven't really seen swimming. I've seen a leopard dive into the water, into a dam. Uh, a merry, like not dam, big dam, but like a little puddle of mud slash water pan and uh, looking for fish. So there's a, that's, that's exactly like this male leopard that we're looking for now. He loves it. He loves coming to look for fish at some of these pans. Oh, Marips, he's a little fisherman. But they don't really go and swim and go under. Alright, slowly move past here. Yeah. Mm, nothing. Nothing there. Yeah, the birds are so you can see there's not hardly any bird life at the moment. They're all taking shelter. I don't want to fly around in this wetness. Oh, I think, sorry, my ear pieces are getting very wet here, falling out of my ear. On you. Chloe, uh, eight years, my gear knob came off. Chloe, eight years old. Uh, I didn't hear what to do. Sorry, Greg, my earpiece is so wet at the moment. I'm, it sounds like I'm in, a, in the bathroom. Or it sounds like you're in the bathroom. It's very, very echoey. Sorry, my earpiece is. I think the water got inside, yeah. Um, Paul, maybe you can just assist me a bit, yeah. Sorry, my earpiece is. Chloe. Wait inside. Chloe. Chloe, yeah. Oh, Chloe, eight years old. I hope you see a naturalist. Oh, <laughs> yes, you're a leopard. <laughs> Thanks, sir. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Chloe. Yes, I'm hoping that we're gonna see a leopard. Chloe, I'm hoping so, I'm hoping so. Hoping so. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcasts. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
cool. Look at that big mama pushing her way through. <clears throat> Beautiful. Welcome, guys. Welcome. Good afternoon. Jessica, you see elephants are almost like twins, you know, where they all look alike, but they are small defining features. They are small features that you can tell. Like some may have more wrinkles than others. Some may have little cuts on their ears. Some may have boxier heads than others. Some may have longer trunks. Some may have longer tusks. What we usually look for is the tusks, the thickness, and the length of the tusks, sometimes even the color. And the other one is we look at sometimes the shape of the head. Because most elephants will have similar shapes of head, but not exactly the same. The other one that's also, I think, is most important is looking at the, the, the little kind of cuts that they have on their ears. You know, the little, the little kind of missing chunks of ear. You can see at the top of her ears, just on the left there, that there is a little bit of her ear missing. Now some elephants may not have that same chunk missing at that same exact spot. That's one of the ways. Also size. Size is also a very good way to tell the difference between elephants, you know. This lady here, her name is Cooper. I know that because she is huge. She's a big female. Hello, how are you? you? Looks like you've got a little cut on your trunk there. There's another big lady who's in charge. That is Cooper's first ball. Zeke? Elephants do. They do fight with others um, occasionally. And uh, yeah, they don't, <laughs> elephants don't, they're not very sociable amongst other animals. They don't tolerate them very well, you know. And they end up chasing them away, making sure <laughs> they are the only ones in this area. Hello, Bongani. Can you, you just block our shot there? That's fine. We would. Looking at that beautiful lady there until you interrupted. Um, elephants will chase rhinos. Elephants will chase lions. Elephants will chase hippos. They'll chase. They'll chase everything, including sometimes us. Most of the time, they tend to be well behaved. Hello, hello. How are you? This is also one of the big ladies, Baluleka. I apologize if you can see the seats, they are right behind us. They, they kind of caught us off guard. We thought that they were going to be uh, crossing in front of us, so they decided they're actually going to cross behind us. Excuse me? I don't think we need to be doing Thank you. You can. We just had uh, a little lady shake her head at us for, for what reason? I don't know. I don't think we did anything wrong. But that was pretty cool. They're all starting to move off that way. And I'm sure we are going to wrap around and hopefully get a better a better look at them. Oh, they've kicked up a lot of dust. And there's dust and, and bits of grass flying around. Oh my goodness. But worth it. Ooh, that smell of elephant. Soothing. To some, not all. I love the smell of elephants, but this is also my favorite animal, so you become accustomed to it. <laughs> it's, not a, it's a very interesting smell, musky, musky smell. And each animal out here has their own specific scent. Elephants smell, specific, smell like specific animals. Well, not smell like specific animals. They are their own animal. Lions smell. They have a, they have a different uh, smell to them. Buffalo do, uh, rhinos do, 
that'll be both black and white because they both eat different different types of food. Um, what else we have a different smell? Water buck. Oh my goodness. Water buck do have a bit of a stench to them. It is very bright. We are um, shooting in the direction of the sun. Oh, Michelle, they do. They do look very scary when they get very, very close. But when you actually look into their eyes, you can really see the the, the soul of a gentle, a gentle elephant. You know, eyes do tell a lot about the character in somebody if they look like they've got evil eyes then generally they will <laughs> generally they will be quite evil but um, none of our elephants really have those evil eyes they have the mischievous eyes where you know they're going to come and cause some form of trouble but uh, for the large majority they have these soft beautiful eyes and most of them are absolutely beautiful uh, they really are so kind to us they are understanding yeah they're understanding elephants these elephants have some of them have been around for very long the oldest elephant that we have or the oldest female elephant is she the, no she is the oldest elephant she is 49 going on 50 so she is a, she's been around for quite some time Gonna try and see maybe if we can get a little bit closer and uh, start seeing more of their bodies. In the meantime, we're gonna send you up to Cedric to see what he's up to. Thanks, Eric. Yes, we have picked up on some female Niolas. Niola. N Y A L A, and there they go. So, a nice little herd of you know, female Nialas here, but they've just gone deeper in. I think uh, not too comfortable at the moment. Um, Paul, I'm going to go a little bit forward. Let's see if we can get a little bit of a better angle here. But you can see how they're keeping cover. They're staying like they're staying pretty much hidden under the out of the rain. Clever girls. Just let me know if you're sure. There you go. So Paul is going to try his magic again. There we go. <laughs> they don't want to hang. All right, we're going to try once again. One more time. Let's try again. You're going to just move a little bit here. Yeah. Sorry, girls. Sorry, ladies. We just want to come past you. Yeah. I'm going to go rather further here yeah, than we. Take a look from this side. Kingston, they are females. The males have got the horns. All right, let's see if we can get this one. So, of course, uh, these are all females. So the females do not have horns, like the impalas and the kudus and all that. All the females, they do not have horns. It's just the males. And the males will use their horns to compete against one another to have the rights to have a harem. A harem is a group of females, a breeding herd. Now what's interesting about the Niyala is that all the females that you see here in this group, they're all related. They're all related. So it's like the sisters and it's the mothers and the grannies, they're all related. Because once the males grow up a little bit older, once they get to about three years old, then they start getting kicked out by the dominant male. And then they go off by themselves or they'll join other males. But aren't they beautiful? Look at those stunning white stripes running down the side of their body. It almost looks like somebody has thrown white paint on top of their spine, on their back, and then it all kind of ran down. Beautiful. And clearly you can see that these uh, Niolas, are not, they're not too active at the moment, I think, because of the rain. They're rather trying to 
stay under cover for now. But they love the thick vegetation. <coughs> Sorry, you can see those. <coughs> Sorry, it's <laughs> my voice. No worry, Paul. I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Um, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> so, yeah, with all the. Because uh, they're always in the thick vegetation and all that, so the stripes really break the outline of their body. So if there's any predators coming through the area, lions or a leopard, something like that, at least they kind of blend in a little bit easier into the thick stuff. And uh, that's why they've got those nice stripes coming through, the little dots on their face. But you can see even those nice ears, they've got big ears. You can see how she's listening out. She's taking interest in something that's a little bit further on there. I'm not too sure what. Now and again, she can see those ears go forward, always listening out for any danger. Mimi, yeah, they're still very calm in the rain. <coughs> they're not too bothered. <coughs> Sorry, I think I'm getting a funny rainy throat here at the moment. I think, I think it's because of the rain. The the Thanks, Mpo. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived. The 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward and the 31st of March will see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth. So there's a impala lamb that is, oh, we just missed it. There was an impala lamb that was suckling. It was quite special to see. Henry, so you will find Inyalas and impalas um, sometimes within the same area. And they are friends. I mean, they're not competition. They're, often the Inyalas are feeding on the leaves 
almost strictly on leaves, whereas the impalas, they feed on both. So you will sometimes fee, uh, find them within the same area together, especially if there's uh, only like one in Yala. I've seen it many a times that there's one in Yala roaming in and amongst the impalas together. And so they're happy to, to be with one another. There's enough food around for them, so they don't have to fight one another. Okay, I'm gonna send you over to Eric quickly. We've managed to find them again and they're coming down to a water hole. They look highly disappointed. They are babies are all pouring at the mud. Not even mud. Shame, this is quite sad. They're digging. Some of them are digging, little babies digging over there. Um, is trying his very best to try and get what little close to out that the Eastern Cape is suffering with. we struggling with water, you know. It gets so warm, and there's almost nothing for these for these animals, you know. And uh, it's not, well, can't always blame the drought. The heat also is a part to play in it as well. The heat's not very good, obviously, drying out a fair amount of the, the water. And I feel for the mothers of, the, of these little babies, as I've seen that one little baby suckling on, uh, on mom there, just wanting something desperately to drink. Oh, there's a little bit of mud. Can you imagine how frustrated they must be? Wanting something and not getting it. The babies still seem to have the whale of a time. Sure, this pan is too small for all of these <laughs> elephants. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's enough for a mud bath, but that's about it, you know. Nothing else. Nini, it is a pleasure. I'm glad you've enjoyed them. I love elephants. They are my favorite, favorite, favorite animals of all time. Oh, just watch this. I mean, they're playing with themselves here. You can see, oh, this little baby. Look at that, she's digging. It has been absolutely amazing having the kids join our drive. Lovely to hear all the questions and the enthusiasm behind it. We really hope that you come back and ask more. We hope that you've enjoyed the kids' drive and the animals that we've shared with you. As I always say to the younger generation, try and find an animal that you like watching the most and try and learn as much as you possibly can of it. We look forward to seeing you soon. This is not, yeah, this is no longer a water hole. This is now a mud bathing party. 
if you could hear the noises that's coming from here. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of elephants enjoying the mud. They are having themselves an absolute time here. Everyone's having a bit of a dig. Because the mud is not necessarily on the surface. They just have to break the surface. Break through the surface to get to the nice muddy part. I'm sure we're going to have some lying down in a bit. Look, oh, look at her. <laughs> There's another one, I think. Oh my goodness. <laughs> She's <laughs> having a, <laughs> I think there's some babies that, oh my goodness. <laughs> there's another bum that's just decided to lie down there with her. Oh, these. <laughs> um, Pedro, elephants, they, they will dehydrate, um, just just like we will. And uh, obviously, once you dehydrate it, it does obviously start affecting your health and your ability to to just to move around. Humans, we get very bad dehydration. You know, when we get dehydrated, it's almost as if we can't function afterwards. With them, they can move around, they can function, but it's just, obviously, it's not easy. So, well, having water is generally something that they must have at least once in 48 hours or twice. Generally, twice, two or three times in 48 hours is best. Oh, my goodness. I'm watching some of these tails wag, and um, they're hitting the side of the body and sticking to it, because that's where the mud is. Oh my word, this is amazing. Amazing! Ooh. Lillian, I, it, that's exactly that. I think they've made the most of what they've got with them and, you know, that's, uh, that's admirable. You know, some, would have, some animals would have been grumpy and would have left the water hole immediately. But elephants are just like little pigs, and they love mud. Oh, goodness. Okay, the big man has spoken. <laughs> we just had, um, you know, watching one of the little babies there, but I was watching on one of the big bulls, Corley, and he just did a little trumpet and a shake of his head, and everybody sort of, like, jumped. <laughs> I mean, I also would jump if he says, jump. I'm saying how high, because this is a big elephant. Oh, little youngster's not so happy. I'm noticing he's doing a fair bit of pushing around. Oh, that lady's not happy. You can see her trunk is up. I think they're gonna come and stand right in front of us here. You're more than welcome to. Absolutely. Are you? She's gonna come feed in the bush right in front of us. <sighs> Please don't shake all the dust. Please. My goodness. Oh, cool. Stacy, uh, for the water to come back to this pan, we'd need a bit of rain. So the rain that is expected, I hope, does come in the evening and does, well, leave enough water in here for them to drink <clears throat> because they won't stick around much longer if, they, if there's no water for them here. We're about to have a walk by, I suspect. This is normally what they do. They come out, oh, hello. 
<laughs> Good afternoon, afternoon, madam. Oh, he's throwing dust. Thank goodness the wind is going in the opposite direction. Well, not opposite. It's going from from right to left, which is good because she's throwing dust up in the air and it's coming towards us. We're getting even. We're also getting a shower of dust, and it's only you that need the dust, not us, madam. We're all good. We've got our sunblock on. Love these these elephants. My favorites. Mm-hmm. Ned Ride Bongani. I couldn't help but notice to tell that you're dropping mud all over the place. Did you know that? No? No. I didn't think so. Alright, here's Collie. The big boy. One of the females has just uh, left a little bit of droppings there and he's uh, investigating it, testing the, the pheromones in the, in the feces to see if she's ready for mating. Yes, Linda Perley, Morgan's doing an absolutely amazing job here. There's just so much to look at. Hello. <laughs> Hello, little youngster. You've got some mud on your face. Yes, but you've got beautiful eyes and your eyelashes. Is astounding. Oh. Now they all finished riding in the mud. Now they're kind of covering the mud and the dust. They're going to go. The baby's upside down. The baby's upside down? Yeah. Where do you see the baby? Just behind this youngster. Little youngster, move. Okay, everybody's in the way here. There's a baby upside down. Move. Get out the frame. Oh, my goodness. No. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> No, of course, you've got to stand there. <laughs> oh, I don't know if we're going to see this baby upside down. <clears throat> Sorry, Gwen, I didn't hear that last. All the elephants want the camera time. Oh, yes, indeed. They all, they all want to be on film, you know? It didn't feel like this this morning, and it didn't feel like that last night. It felt like everybody was just running away. Can you maybe have a chat to the Red Heart Beast and the Zebra and tell them maybe the camera time is not so bad? Because, uh, yeah. Uh, excuse me. Hello. There's somebody behind us. What are you doing there? No, leave the equipment. We need that. <laughs> Morgan is introducing himself to the elephant. Elephant is greeting him. How do you do? Oh, Darcy Miller. I love talking to these elephants. I sometimes think they understand me. Sometimes, not all the time. <laughs> the mud has definitely slowed their roll down. They're not as much in a hurry as they were earlier. Oh, that's an unhappy party. What's wrong? Uh-huh. There's Collie. What's going on in the pan here, ladies? What, uh, what are you, what are you up to there? See, they're just doing a lot of rubbing. Oh, somebody's found a stick. Oh, they both found a stick. So that's what they're doing. One's playing with a small branch. I don't know if you can see. There's a br there seems to be a small tree in the way. <clears throat> and then... Collie's throwing sand right behind 
We've got elephants trying to distract us from conducting the show at the back here. And there's others. Messing with mud over there. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you. <laughs> this has been absolutely what a wow. You guys have really done it again. You've done it again. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at the little babies, but <laughs> can't help it. It's hilarious. <laughs> wow. So, what a sighting that was. We had the babies come twice. <laughs> and one fell over there, and he fell again over there. <laughs> shouldn't laugh, but it is hilarious. And uh, someone has just broken a tree down. Um, oh. Who's at the back there breaking trees? Goodness. Wow. Everyone's feeling very calmly over here. But uh, someone's munching whole branches. All right, uh, well, a very good afternoon to everybody. My name is Cedric, and behind the camera with me, we've got Muscles and Poya and Rusty and his little teddy bear. All right, well, it's been quite a wet afternoon so far. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try, I'm trying to go to some of the pans here because I'm trying to listen out to see if we can pick up on some frogs that's making a noise. And I'm actually, this is one of the pans I wanted to get to, but there's, well, there's not even a drop of water in here. All right, don't worry about that. 
Yeah, we'll continue. Uh, we're just gonna see if we can get some nice amphibians for the afternoon because I love sitting at some of these water holes and uh, just listening out to all the beautiful sounds and see if we can maybe spot one or two of them. You never know. You never know. We'll take this opportunity while we can with this rain that's come through for the afternoon to see if we can get the, the little froggies or little rain frogs as well. A lot of different species that we can try and look out for. As well on top of that, I'm just uh, uh, looking if we can get any fresh tracks. You know, most of the tracks have all been washed away due to the rain. So it's very, very difficult trying to even think of following up on something unless, unless something just walk past. And then it's a different story. And you know, it is very fresh. But it's good, good rain, nice for the afternoon. Good for the bush, a little bit of a, a water injection here for the for the felt. Uh, sorry, Gwen. Uh, she asked you, what is easy to find after the rain? Snakes. Is it snakes? Uh, Sherry, you say snakes? Um, nah, not really snakes. No, certain snakes. Maybe like your maybe you're like your burrowing asp or the stilettos, mole snakes. Yeah, that you'll find around. You take a look at around, around the termite mounds, and we might uh, get lucky with those snakes. Others like uh, your your cobras and mambas and you know sand snakes and all that. That's gonna be quite difficult because they like to rather heat up their body and you know and get that energy going. But uh, the stilettos, burrowing asps, and stilet and uh, mole snakes, and, uh, they'll just hang around the termite mounds because now the mound is nice and soft. Some of the mounds are opening up and then they go for the termites. It's, but we might be lucky, we might be lucky around here. Yeah? I'm just going very slowly along the northern boundary at the moment. Um, just now my reps at male leopard decided to come west instead of going east and maybe we've been checking completely in the wrong area. So I'm going a bit west now and just to see if we get lucky within this side. We didn't get any of his tracks this morning. No way. No way. No way to be found. I know those, in those black dam males, apparently those two male lines, they're still on uh, Biffelzook, around Biffelzook airstrip area. So maybe they come down for the, you know, for tomorrow morning. Well, maybe they come down now. You never know. You never know. But yeah, no, this rain makes it quite tough. Makes it very, very tough at the moment. But it's fine. All right. Well, we're going to continue west along the northern boundary. Let's head over to Chad. said as it is a little bit tough out here this afternoon on Juma but we found a beautiful lilac breasted roller that's just perched on a silver cluster leaf tree there it does seem like it's puffed its feathers out it does seem like it's puffed its feathers out there and uh, doesn't seem too happy I think it's a little bit cold as well as very, very wet. But my name's Chad. On camera today we've got Panda. There's old Panda's thumb. And we are bumbling around Juma, seeing what we can find. Like Cedric said, it is uh, quite a tough afternoon out. There's been quite substantial rain. Oh, there we go. There goes that lilac breasted roller. But I think I will continue driving and we can chat while I drive so it is uh, gonna be quite a tough afternoon out 
out here on Juma. Apologies, I'm just gonna close that up so the screen doesn't get wet, but it's gonna be tough. Um, the, the tracks of animals have been washed away, so to know where to start, very, very tough. So what our plan is, myself and Panda, we're gonna be doing a couple of zigzags throughout the areas, driving different roads, trying to cover quite a lot of ground um, in order to hopefully see something or some more animals. We, we know the, the areas that are often quite productive for animals in this area, so we'll often stick to those areas. I mean, there's been quite a lot of elephant activity during the rain. Um, since the sunrise safari this morning you can see on a couple of the roads the elephant tracks over our vehicle track so the elephants are around it's just a, a matter of where they are hiding and at this stage we'll take anything won't we panda and that's uh, that's what happens I mean you can't predict the weather all the time sometimes on safari it will rain and it's an adventure. Apologies there, Panda's just gonna sometimes clean the lens of the camera and this does get a, a couple of rain specks on it. So it's, a, it's all part of the adventure. I mean, the roads are starting to become a little bit slippery, sliding all over the show. And the potential to maybe get stuck if there is lots more rain. Wakey, you're asking the biggest bird of prey, so the biggest bird of prey would be a martial eagle. So a martial eagle, which is a, a beautiful big bird. Um, if you go and Google a martial eagle, very, very big, a white face, it's got spots on the chest, um, and then also black in color. Massive talons, or claws. They say that the talons are as big as a grown man's thumb so I mean somewhere there which is probably four or five centimeters in length maybe an inch and a half or two inches and that they'll use those talons to so say for instance a monitor lizard running in the road that martial eagle will come down to the monitor lizard and grab it and as it grabs it it will use those talons to puncture through the, the spine or the skull of that monitor lizard and then fly off with it. So I mean, martial eagles have actually been known to take baby impalas or impala lambs. So you can imagine how strong that bird must be in order to carry away an impala lamb. I've seen a martial eagle once before take a monitor lizard Experience captivating wildlife documentaries, showcasing incredible animal behavior, for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
So it is a, a tough afternoon out and about this afternoon. So I'm just trying to turn the radio volume down a little bit. Often uh, when it does rain out in the, the bush, it is tough to find animals. I mean, the, the easiest way for us to find them is to follow the tracks. And with it having rained, it's not the greatest conditions to track something down. And if we do find tracks, we 100% know that it is very, very fresh. So that's what we're looking for. We're gonna turn up ahead in a little bit and then do some loops within this area to see if we can find anything. But as we continue driving and bumbling along here in Juma, I'm gonna send you over, we're gonna stick on Juma, but I'm gonna send you over to Cedric, who's doing some birding. Got a Warburg's Eagle. Yeah, very, very miserable Warburg's Eagle right on top there. It looks like a Warburg's, or is it? Yeah, it is a Warburg's. Uh, just looking at the almost like a black mask on it. Um, I can't use my binocs because uh, I don't want to get that wet now. So I'm just trying to use my eyes here now. It looks like, yeah, that is a Wahlberg eagle. It looks like it. But I'm a bit worried about it because the legs, are, they don't have feathers on it. Almost sort of maybe an African harrier hawk. Might be an African harrier hawk. That looks... Yeah, that might be. Uh, it's not a Wahlberg eagle, sorry, because a Wahlberg eagle, see the legs. Wahlberg eagle will have feathers all the way down, like a true eagle, where the African harrier hawk hasn't got those feathers. And plus the head, the shape of the head and the beak is very pointy, very like kind of a, it comes to a very sharp uh, angle uh, to the beak area. And that's uh, typical for the African harrier hawk. A very miserable one. Oh, I almost got that wrong. Yeah, see, that's the thing about birding. You've got to start looking at certain little things, and uh, you know the head and the the featherless uh, legs kind of gave it away. So yeah, this uh, African hairy hawk is not doing too much, and he's just trying to remain very stolly in the rain. That's the typical of the big birds. You know, too much rain, get those feathers that become very heavy. You know, they're going to spend too much energy trying to flower a fire around and it's not going to be it's not going to have that agility to get through like especially for the african harrier hawk they love going from one dead tree to the next dead tree and um you know and if you've got big heavy feathers on your body you're not going to be too happy oh, he's looking at us funny <laughs> he's doing funny things yeah you know like stretching its neck there do you see that yeah. Almost like this is a bit of a neck stretch. This is nice. It might be a juvenile. Sorry, I'm just at the. There's no sunlight, so sometimes it can become so tricky if you did not have the right lighting. It becomes very, very difficult and all that. So I think maybe it might be. Might be. Look a little bit grey, maybe a little bit of brownish around the breast area. Well, a true eagle, Kim, is much, uh, they are larger and they've got the feathers running all the way down the leg area. Um, sometimes you'll even find their beaks are a little bit more robust compared to the hawks. Uh, all your gosh hawks and that, just, uh, you'll find, you know, prey species. Not all of them, you know, they're just all different. You know, every eagle goes for, you know, they kind of specialize on different prey, uh, prey uh, uh, species around these areas and with hawks as well same thing some of the hawks will go for birds some of the hawks will go for squirrels so it all depends oh look oh, sorry no I almost was, I saw something I was doubting myself with the African hairy hawk but it is small head as well Okay. 
you can see that nice shape of that head. All right, so it looks like Eric is having all the luck for the afternoon with those elephants. I think let's head over to Eric down there in Amakala. I will apologize if you do see a little bit of a roof there. And there's another vehicle. Well, there are a lot. <coughs> there are other vehicles in here. Excuse me. There's been a bit of a hold up here. I don't know what's going on. There's been babies on the floor and lot, see lots of mud being thrown up in the air and not exactly too, <laughs> too sure what's going on. But they've all come to a bit of a standstill. I think they're having a, a big conversation as to where to next. I think they've been slightly dis... Oh, there we go. There's a bum on the floor. A baby's lying down again. <laughs> They get very tired, you know. Mom and mom and her 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 friends make her, make us walk all this distance for mud. I just want to lie down. I want to sleep. Little baby, I'm with you on that one. It does look like it's very tiring. Oh, there's Collie in the way there. Collie, move yourself. You're in the way of a baby on the floor. We'd like to get on screen. Yes, yes, yes. Keep going. Keep going, big boy. Keep going. Yeah. Oh, you see now you just moved the wrong... The baby's moved to the side that Collie's now moved to. Everything's done on purpose. Look at these guys here. But naughty. It appear we have some youngsters throwing it down. It looks like <laughs> that one's got his other youngster's tusk in its mouth. You can't eat that. Definitely not edible. It's the same material as your teeth. There's a uh, mom or grandmom, grandmom going to go and uh, oh, I need to put that to an end. That was a little baby who's thirsty, wants some milk, and uh, mom is just not having any of it. That little baby there, <laughs> that's an unhappy little baby. Give me milk! Oh, milk, milk. Okay, so they've come to a bit of a, well, they've come to a conclusion. It would seem we are all now still heading west. That's fine. West it shall be. I think the last time the herd was this far west was when uh, Kohli and Afstad also had that that fight. Uh, was it that December? Or was that January? I think it was January. I think it was January as well. I remember seeing the beginning of that fight, but not really the full extent of it. Morgan and Andrew were here for that, to witness the whole thing and put it live for everybody to see. Those elephants were not happy with each other. And, uh, oh, my goodness, the wind! It's January. January. January, Morgan says. All right. So I think what we're going to do is we're definitely going to go and follow them, but it's going to wait for this dust cloud to disappear because whoa, it is very, very dusty out here. And uh, that's why okay, I don't have them on top of glasses is very important um, <laughs> for, for days like this because you know, when we're driving into the wind and the wind picks up and we drive on very sandy roads, we forget this is a dirt road and with dirt there's lots of dust and dust is very light. It gets picked up by the sun, by the, well, not by the sand, by the, the wind very, very easily and uh, yeah, it doesn't end very well. We're going to send you over to Cedric to go and check in with Cedric, see what he's got with him. Good luck there, Eric, trying to get out of the wind. And we have found a little bit of life here on Juma. We've found a crested Franklin, but as well as a beautiful female waterbuck. And she seems like she is quite happy to be standing in the rain. Beautiful shaggy coat. I 
did see some movement to her left. And, uh, it might be a male, but it's very tough to see behind these thick red bush willows here. But how beautiful is that? Nice to see that white ring around the bum of the water buck. And you can see how she's putting her head down, feeding, and then lifting up constantly. A lot of the time animals during the, the rain and the wind, they tend to be a little bit more nervous and hesitant. So that's why she'll lift her head up every now and then while feeding. Because they might not be able to hear a predator coming. How beautiful is this going to be? Look to the left. Oh. Can you see the male there, panda? <laughs> that male water buck is now hiding. But they've got the most beautiful horns, these male water bucks. And hopefully he does cross the road and follow that female so everybody is able to see those horns. There we go. You would think I'm controlling him at the moment. But so you, you will often find water bucks in a harem, so one male to many females. But it seems like this is one male and one female. I don't see any more water bucks around. So maybe this water buck male has stolen this female and is now going to then mate with her. Canon girl, those hearts on their noses are amazing to see. And, uh, there we go, you can see it now. Literally the shape of a heart. Sending everybody love from Juma Private Game Reserve here in the northern Sabi Sands and it from a rainy Juma. It seems like these water bucks though are happy to be moving around in the rain. So we might get to see them again. If they do move further to the right, there's a, a gap in the silver cluster leaf. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app, accessible on both Apple and Android platforms.
We've managed to, to find them again. Who is that? Someone is breaking branches at the back there and making an awful lot of noise. The poor trees. Um, it's probably a bull. You know what? Oh, look, look, look. <laughs> Someone's got a branch at the top there. In South Africa, we call that pot course. That is food for the road. <laughs> uh, that is also, it's an Afrikaans, a famous Afrikaans saying. Well, definitely in my family. <laughs> That's the one who was breaking Francis. A do doggy bag. <laughs> uh, that is a, the ultimate comment from Gwyn. <laughs> <It's a do> <laughs> Oh my goodness, these elephants have been so entertaining this afternoon. <laughs> she still got it. <laughs> she dropped it for another bro. Oh, no. Stay in front of us. She's up the road. And she won't break another tree. She's about to pull down another branch. You think she's going to carry it? Oh. That was anticlimactic. It was a small, bro a small twig with some leaves on it. I don't know what the story is there. I do apologize. There's another vehicle next to us that you will definitely hear. Hmm. So they all seem to be now moving northwest as opposed to west. Christian, uh, he's moving with the herd because he is in a must, which means he's at this all-time high of testosterone. So he's just wanting to mate with babies. Mate with babies, mate with babies. So he's now gone up to this female, and he's now, I don't know, I can't exactly see what he's doing, but I can see he's resting his head on top of her backside. Oh, he's pulling a tree. Or is she pulling the tree? Someone's messing around with the tree there. I don't know who it is. It could be him, it could be her. Maybe it's both. Maybe they're sharing a meal together. But yes, Collie's following the herd because he's in must and he's wanting to create more little elephants and uh, extend his gene pool. Lovely. Milton, um, this wind, uh, look, it's very hard to tell. Uh, the reason why I say is because we are, on, I can't remember what day it is now, but we've been here for, I think we're on our fifth week. We've been here for four weeks so far. And in those four weeks, we've had one afternoon where there was no wind. It sounds crazy, but it's true. One afternoon where I have, haven't had to hide myself, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear me due to the wind blowing over the mic. Um, so I, when, oh, when it's windy, generally the behavior does change, but it's been so windy recently I think this is just part of their normal behavior. You know, generally they will go and hide in amongst thicket, and they have. You know, they've come up to the dune forest. It's fairly, fairly covered here, but there's also spots, you know, like where we're sitting now and where they are. It's not necessarily sheltered from the wind. They quite, well, they, for the large majority of them, are taller than all of these shrubs, as you can see there. So it's not really protecting them much from the wind. Um, but wind, yes, wind definitely does change the behavior, you know, also when it's, when it's very, very, very strong. Anyway, we're going to continue sitting here with these beautiful animals, and we're going to send you over to Cedric with some Impala. Thank you, Eric. Well, not much happening in Juma at the moment. Still a lot of rain, and uh, we have got a, a herd of impalas. Well, we kind of still got a herd of impalas. That's in the distance at the moment. There you go, the one ahead coming up. 
Yep, that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, where we are at the moment, yeah, at Juma, with all this rain. Oh, everything has taken cover. Everything. Got a young male, can see the little horns there. So I'm on the western side at the moment, and <clears throat> I feel like I'm just want to do a little bit on the western area just to double check if. Uh, there isn't any, or uh, well, nothing's come over from the west. Of course, Arethusa and Samambili, it's pretty much properties that's just to the west of Juma. Nothing has come over into Juma. But we're just hunkering down for a little bit more, yeah? Uh, the rain has just decided to start up quite a bit again. Sometimes even sitting with impalas like this, all of a sudden if they do see something and they start alarm calling, well, <clears throat> might get lucky there. Cheetahs and other animals, yeah, you never know, something might pop out for us. And as I said, I'm still on in, uh, in search of uh, some nice frogs. Uh, that is my mission at the moment. I'm sure in the next... Uh, Half an hour or so. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get a get a whole lot of croaking happening down at some of the pans, but we will take a look. How the impalas? No, pretty much taken notice of us yet. Yeah? Uh, Viv P. Yes, I will go take a look under the dam cam. Apparently, uh, I did get a message the other day, and. Uh, I think I completely forgot, but I'll take a look under the dam cam. There is a plank with a nail that's sticking out there, and I shall go and remove it this afternoon. Thank you for that info. Do appreciate it. Anyway, <coughs> let's head over to Chad. Thanks very much, Sidders. Good luck out there. And after the water buck in Yala, we've stopped um, and we are close to a buffalo thorn tree. This uh, tree over here is the, the buffalo thorn, and it's a pretty special tree. The area that I was in in Zululand, the Zulus uh, believe this is a very spiritual tree. And what they do believe, I'll tell you now after this, but you can look here, there's one straight thorn, and then there's one curve thorn so they say never forget your past but always look forward towards your future and you can also eat the leaves of this uh, buffalo thorn tree they, to be honest they aren't the greatest um, but I mean you can put them in a, a salad or things like that and a lot of the time when people do pass away in the local cultures within the Zululand region where I was what they'll often do is, if that person passes away, away from their home, a lot of the time they'll break a buffalo thorn and go and wave the buffalo thorn leaf or branch like this over that body and then come back to their home and they'll then feed it to one specific goat. If that goat feeds on the leaves, they then say that they haven't brought the spirit back home with them and they'll have to then do it again. But if they then bring that um, buffalo thorn leaves back to the, the house and that goat doesn't feed on them, then they'll say that now they've brought that spirit back towards the home. So quite a special tree. I mean, also this branch that I've got in my hand here, I don't know, Panda, if you can zoom in quite a lot there. It's, it's very red in color, this section over here. And this is actually a new branch. So, I mean, this is very, very rich in nutrients for animals like giraffe. Giraffe really do enjoy feeding on the buffalo thorn. You'll sometimes find elephants feeding on it, but also the antelope species, minyalas, kudus, um, impalas, things like that. Quite a, a special tree, this, the buffalo thorn. The rain is still raining here at Juma, and I just decided to stop and talk about something a little bit different.
Hansu, you're asking if we can make tree uh, tea, sorry, from the this tree. We can't make a tea from this specific tree. There is a tree though that we can make tea from, and I'm just trying to remember the name for you. But uh, if I do remember the name, I will let you know next time you you cross to me. As I, I do remember learning about some specific tree, but I I can't remember the exact name now. But once I do remember the name, I will then let you know what that is. But I think uh, from here, we're going to continue on our little bumble and see what we can find. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. AfriCam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. Where are you all? They're going to that opening just below. Oh. Morgan sees them. He says that they are all on the opening. Just in front of us, which is just on the other side of there. And that's exactly where we are going to go and meet them. Yeah. <laughs> where are you guys going to pop out? They've moved, well, she's moved from uh, eating the trees to now eating the grass. She's become a grazer.
Yeah, yeah they definitely slowed down their role from when we first saw them. You know, they were moving fairly quickly, they were feeding. And now they seem to be getting ready for the evening. Elephants don't really walk around much in the evening. Um, well, no, I mean, not always. You know, sometimes they can move land and earth in the, in the night time. And, you, you know, you last see them in, like, an area like this. And then in the morning, they're found somewhere on the eastern border of the reserve. You're like, how on earth did they get there so, so quickly? I mean, that's a long way to have gone. But... Um, yeah, most of the time they're not very, very far away from where they left feeding in the evening, especially in the thick thicket like this. I suppose it's not really thick thicket if we're sitting 80 meters away from this lady and there's no trees in between us. It's quite spread out, but we've just come from thick thicket where that pan was and where we first found them. Oh, look at that. What happened to the cut of, are we, tusks? Hey, the tusks of this female. Um, so long, obviously, long ago, there used to be a lot of uh, elephant hunting for ivory in uh, the Nisner forest, and this is more or less where her ancestors have come from. Um, and every, you know, every generation or every second generation, tusks would get shorter and shorter and shorter just due to the high demand of ivory. Eventually, they've sort of, they've lost the ability to grow tusks. Um, you'll find that there's a lot of females, or well, maybe not a lot of females, it's just mostly bee family females that are like that. But that little youngster over there, oh my, not that little youngster. Yeah, that little youngster is the grandchild of that lady over there, and you can see that little youngster's got tusks. And just that just comes from her, so that lady mating with that big boy that you're about to see come into picture. So that big boy and her mating, producing offspring, and then him mating again with the offspring of that offspring or someone else mating with that offspring with the ability to grow tusks. And then uh, it all, it all eventually adds up. But basically, everybody leading up to, or everybody above that one little elephant that has the tusks would have mated with a bull that has tusks, therefore giving them the gene to grow tusks. It's quite confusing. I hope I've made sense and haven't been rambling on. But uh, Paluleka and her daughter, Bongani, who was next to her, doesn't have tusks. And bon Bongani's daughter does have tusks. Bongani's son, sorry. Bongani's son does have tusks. She's feeling like a clump of grass there, but it looks like she's... Oh, that's not a clump of grass. What is that? Is that a branch or something? Oh, she's eating bark. I find the elephants will eat bark quite often. Helps with the whole digestive, digestive process. Helps very nicely. Oh, he's, he's indulging himself there. He's feeding, getting a good feed in there. Molly, um, no. So matriarchs are generally normally the last females the bulls generally mate with. You know, our, our matriarchs are very old. Well, not very old, but our matriarchs, you know, they've, they all, all three of them are in this stage of, uh, or in their 40s. And he's only in his 30s. So he's still young. 
he's still young. So he will mate with more of the females that are his age. Um, you know, as their bodies will will be able to, I wouldn't say produce the babies faster. It's just they are more cut out for it at this point in time. I feel like, Baluleke, she's, she can still have babies, but I think she might prefer not to. She's had five already and uh, five or six. I think that's a decent amount for an elephant in their lifetime. Five or six babies. And each pregnancy, you know, extending up to 22 months. Oh my goodness. Can be good much. Can be very much. Oh, she's really enjoying that bush there. There's the grass. She's still eating the grass. My mistake. She's still grazing. And grass that she'll be feeding on will be... Uh, uh, it looked like uh, spear grass over there. There's a lot of spear grass in this area. Finger grass. And... There's no weeping love grass here, is there? No, there's Natal red top. There's Natal red top, spear grass and finger grass. Those are the two grass, three grasses that are in this area. And this type of grass does very well in, you know, in sandy, sandy areas where, you know, the Natal red top, it thrives here, but it, it's not doing as well as the rest of the grass does here. Which is why you'll find, I mean, we have lots of general game here, but not always all of the species. Okay, they've changed their direction of heading. Lloyd, they do. Oh, yes, they do. They do have stomach issues. Sometimes they can get stomach infections. Um, you know, and uh, the way that some of them deal with this is they'll go and find some form of toxic plant and they'll consume it. Consume the toxic plant and sometimes that can uh, heal or kill or um, uh, do whatever it needs to do inside. So they won't eat enough to obviously kill themselves, they'll eat enough to kill whatever is causing them trouble on the inside of their stomachs. Now, these elephants are now heading north. Where is he? Look at that little family huddle. Sure, Nina, 22 months is... It's a long time. It's a long time to be pregnant. It's just short of two years. Can you imagine? There'll be some very unhappy mothers out there. Right now. Having to carry a baby for 22 months. So. Look at that little baby on the left of the screen is taking off with some speed. We're watching a very young bull. That's a young one. He's uh, only 13 years old, 13, 14. And that is a Nancy. That looks like a Nancy, yes. A young bull who's uh, is been... <laughs> Not pushed out of the herd, but he's decided to leave the herd, or we we think he's left the herd. But uh, every now and then we find him by himself. You will see there are buildings in the background there that is Bush Lodge. The next best thing for water source for these 
elephants. Yeah, the wind is not letting go at all. It is not let off. Remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our Sunrise Safari. So we haven't had all of them come out into this open patch. It's only been a handful. I think the rest have been in, well, they've been concealed by the thicket. Nonetheless, they're still moving north. Okay, I'm enjoying. Well, <clears throat> I'm enjoying this, and I hope that you are enjoying it as well. Yeah, I love to to share, and uh, it uh, with with you knowing the names of the of the elephants, it helps sometimes me telling stories without having to explain who's who and who has this attitude and who who likes this and who doesn't like that. You know, it helps it helps form my story because a lot of my stories revolve around these bulls. Um, yeah, these bulls have been <laughs> elusive from the start of me being here. You know, I do enjoy sharing it with you. Steve D. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, like I say, elephants are my favorite animals. 
I enjoy spending time with them and I enjoy sharing sharing them with everybody as well. You know, they're very interesting. There's a lot that we can learn from them. There's a lot that I've learned from them, definitely. Um, and I'm, I wonder, I'm sure there's maybe something that the elephants have learned from me. That some humans talk to you and some humans don't. <laughs> I can see them enjoying some of these meals. Sure. We're starting to hear the birds more. I don't know. I, I was hoping the wind was going to die, but mm, mm, mm. Mother Nature has other plans for us. He doesn't want this, the wind to die. In the distance, it does look like she may even let the sun come out for us a little bit. For the sundowners, maybe? Maybe Mother Nature? Not? No? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. The clouds seem to be moving in the opposite direction of where the sun is going to be setting, so that is good. Very good. We're going to sit on here. In the meantime, we're going to send you up to Chad, who's made his way to a, a waterhole. Thanks very much, Eric. And we have indeed made our way over to a waterhole, to Treehouse Dam, where we have found some more life. Uh, there is one hippo in this water and Dewey has been spending quite a lot of time in Treehouse Dam the last week or so so I wouldn't 100% say that this is Dewey but uh, more than likely the only way we would be able to tell is if he had a nice little stick to play with it would be very entertaining right now and it's still raining here on Juma. It's still been a good afternoon out. But the wind is picking up just a little bit and being wet from the rain and the, the wind isn't a great combination. But I do think that the cats are going to be sleeping or resting in the thicker areas. To try and find I mean, we have found some waterbuck, some kudus, some minyalas, and how nice to see this male hippo. And it's often on days like today that you will find hippos coming out of the water a lot earlier than normal. I mean, normally hippos, once the sun has set and it's gotten a little bit darker, they feel a lot safer to come out the water. But on a day like today, because there's no sunshine, it's raining, if they can keep themselves nice and cool, sometimes you'll find that they'll come out the water a lot earlier. It's because the sun isn't damaging their skin at all. It doesn't even seem like there is any sun with these gray clouds that are above us. And then they might even stay out to feed a lot longer than normal just to get all those necessary nutrients that they can get. And you can see the rain on the water. Now, Susan, hippos don't breathe underwater, so what often will happen is they will block their nostrils, they'll close their eyes, they'll block their ears, and then they'll go down to the bottom. And then they might spend three, four, five, six minutes, just depending on age and size of the hippo. And then they'll come up, and it's a subconscious thing that they will do to come up to breathe. So, for instance, this hippo now looking at him, he's got his nose out of the water, so he's now able to breathe. But if it was a lot deeper, 
you would find that they would lie on the bottom and sleep and then subconsciously come up every between four and six minutes I would say somewhere around there and then they would go back down but they can't breathe underwater they don't have any gills like a fish so they do have to breathe the air that we are breathing you can see those small little ears of this hippo and I'm sure they just fold them down and they're able to then block the water from going into them and often when you find hippos coming up from sleeping or it's coming to take a breath as soon as they come up or as soon as they breach the water they'll often then breathe out and it's often just to clear their nasal passages of any water that might have dripped in and then you often hear them like Psh! and then ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Did you enjoy that, Panda? Myself, uh, Panda, and Steve, when I was here just before I took over from Steve, we actually did a, a Twitter poll on who has the best um, hippo noise. And unfortunately, I did lose. And uh, to my knowledge, Panda, you won. Panda did indeed win. I think it was, oh yes, <laughs> Panda saying that he always wins. I'll find something, Panda, that you won't win at. <laughs> but we are keeping ourselves entertained out here this afternoon. Happy that there is some rain around. And it's been nice to see that there's water that's starting to settle in the road and even some of the little pans. Lexi asking if this is good weather conditions for hippos. Um, I would say yes Just because I mean hippos they do tend to spend a lot of time in the water So they're not afraid of the water or they don't mind the water and like I was explaining a little bit earlier the, It gives these hippos an opportunity to Come out the water a lot earlier in order to feed they might even be able to then stay out the water for longer to get more necessary nutrients and things like that. It's probably not the most favorable conditions for a lion. It's also just a reminder to everybody that there is a town hall happening on the 15th of March at seven o'clock with James and Andre. And they'll be talking about the Wild Earth developments, the new vehicles. It will be live and interactive, so you can send through your questions or comments that you might have. But it's definitely something not to miss out on. So that's on the 15th of March at 7 o'clock. A couple of Red Bull ox pickers that are flying around us. But I think they might just be looking for a spot to go and get out of the rain. It does seem like the rain is starting to rain a little bit harder while we just sit here at Treehouse Dam. But we do have the roof on. Not too sure I got the the name, but was it Brat? I think it was uh, Brat. He, so this uh, hippo is definitely very still in the water, so it might just be resting or sleeping, taking the last little bit of chance to sleep before it does come out. And as we say that, this hippo now starts to move. Let's see. Maybe it's uh, looking for the famous stick 
old Dewey the hippo. I heard a lot of the, of the, there was a lot of years that we're talking about Dewey and how he was in the water with the, the stick and I was very confused the first time I did live at the water hole and I eventually then got to see Dewey with his stick and I was amazed at what was going on and I finally saw it the other day when James was around. We both came to Treehouse Dam not knowing that one another were here and we were able to then see Dewey with his stick. Very, very entertaining, I must say. But he seems to have now just settled down. Maybe just uh, repositioning. You know, when you're sleeping in your bed at home and you on a hot, hot summer's night and it's quite hot and you roll over and then it's a little bit cold or even in a cold winter's night you're in the, that warm spot and then you roll over and it's a, quite a nice cold temperature. I am really looking forward to winter coming up. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. I thought I got it out of my eye. Gwen, there's, uh, there's, like, a, there's like a big piece of mud in my eye. <laughs> I think it came off the side here. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paul, maybe you'll have to blow it out. Yeah, there it is. All right. All right, let's go. I think I got it out. Let's go to chat. <laughs> this naughty little boy 
Okay, well, he's not little, but this naughty boy came in sassing over to us, pretending like he was feeding. Meanwhile, he was trying to intimidate us. Naughty. And now he's kind of walking away, sulking, because we didn't move. It's not like we were on his path. We're on an open field. <laughs> we're on the corner of the field. that wrinkly bottom you can see he's also resting his leg obviously these elephants are on their feet almost all day every day that's why some of them are lying down in the mud so much because it's just so nice not to be on your legs you know not to be standing it's also why they love water so much they go into water they feel like a weightless a weightless animal. Can you imagine weighing four, four to five tons? And you go into the water and all of that four to five tons turns to like 10 kilograms, less than that. I mean, you'd be in water almost every day, wouldn't you? I know I would. Just feeding as he goes following them on the outskirts of the herd, not inside the herd. Most likely here because uh, Collie is in the herd. And he's there. And now, when he's in must, he's the last person you want to test. The last person, the last person whose nerves you want to get on. Jake, I think it's possible, yes. I, I definitely think males will be pushed out because of that. But I don't think females will leave. So females build these, these bonds, and some of these bonds are incredibly strong and almost impossible to, to, impossible for the bonds to be broken. They stick together all the time, you know, they're with each other every single day and for some of them they, they're together for 20 years of their life all day, every day, 24-7, you know? So sometimes it's a bit a bit hard for bonds to be broken, but uh, it's, uh, it's still very possible, it's still very possible indeed. I think the bond between our females here is one that I don't think will be broken. They will definitely kick all the males out, no problem. They can take a hike. It's not a problem. They will, <laughs> they will have no problem doing that um, and letting them in occasionally. You know, they'll tolerate them for a certain amount of time before they say, all right, that's it, your time is up. Um, but... Uh, Oh, it's an interesting question, that. Now he's there. He's just munching. Munching, munching, munching. I don't know. The herd has seemed to... They haven't disappeared. We know they're here because we still can see... I can see there's three members, including him. There's a juvenile. Another juvenile there. Or sub no, a juvenile. And then we've got Baluleka here off to our right, still feeding of some bushes over there. There's a couple of members all the way further down the road, but they all seem to be fairly spread out. Ah, oh, I love that comment. Thank you, Zahmed Lama. I love these elephants. I'll, I'll happily be the whisperer here. Yeah, she does. So I think she was the last one that was on that side of the the, the road. Now she's moving down towards the rest of the herd here, and it's going to rejoin. You can see there's a nice little mud mud splatter. She obviously picked up a nice clump of mud in her trunk, and she obviously threw it all over herself. 
but not quite all over, just partial side of her there. Ah. I, don't know. I don't know if my eyes are deceiving me, but I'm pretty sure. <laughs> it looked like it. Could be wrong, but I'm sure I saw some lightning on the horizon, the very, very far eastern side of the, the valley. Not the valley. This is not a valley. Of this plateau. Es escarpment. Sorry. But... I could be wrong. It could have just been a flash of something. Could be seeing things. As far as I know, it's just the rain that's scheduled for today, not a storm. But uh, it does look fairly grumpy over there. Very grumpy indeed. What was that question? Do elephants hear? Catherine, so do elephants fear? Oh, do elephants fear anything? Yes. Um, they do. They do. So in some places, there's elephants that fear people. Um, and, uh, you know, especially like in places where there's elephants that are quite close to. Um, uh, like a little village or community or rural areas, you know, they they will fear people there because people obviously will be trying to hunt in those areas for themselves, and uh, they'll come across elephants, and uh, they will they don't want the elephants in their area, so they throw stones at them, they'll run after them. That for, that for an elephant is scary. So people, other than that, I think they fear. <laughs> I think they just fear each other, really. You know, lions can give an elephant a good scare, but they're not scared of lions, you know? If, a li if an elephant sees a lion, most likely going to go after the lion. It depends. If there's, like, five lions, a female, a female and a calf, she's going to be scared. It's five lions, you know, and those lions can easily, easily usher her and her calf away from each other. Um, but uh, that, that's a scary moment, but I think for the, most, for, the, yeah, for the most part, elephants don't really fear anything, but I think humans and each other. Maybe lightning, I suppose. Oh, there's a lot of uh, human, human-made things and products that elephants don't like. I think off the top of my head, the number one human product that elephants don't like, helicopters. They can't stand helicopters. They hear a helicopter, the mood of the elephants change. The whole herd turns, I was about to say feral, but feral's the wrong word. They turn foul. They, they're just not nice to be around. They're angry. They, they, you can see that they're upset. It's actually some quite scary to be around elephants that are, are being approached by a helicopter. It doesn't even mean the helicopter doesn't ha have to come towards them. The helicopter can be flying, you know, over the reserve or in the distance. It could be, it, it could be going on a completely different... Uh, direction to which the elephants are going. They're not going to be happy. They're going to run towards thicket. Because that's where they feel they can hide. Sure.
This is a small little bachelor herd of impalas that they've uh, just run off in. Apparently there are some elephants that are drinking at the dam cam. I'm not too sure what Cedric's position is, but maybe he could go and view those elephants for everybody. But I am still pretty far away from that area, quite far in the western parts of Juma. Driving the wild, wild west, hoping to bump into that last minute leopard. It is also nice though that it is raining. I mean, we know we saw the Lamba yesterday because she was on a territorial patrol. Hold on there, Panda. Um, because she was on a territorial patrol because of the rain um, three nights prior. So this also is now going to give an opportunity to a lot of the animals to be out and about a little bit more, going to recent mark their territories. Maybe it gives us the chance to see the black dam males tomorrow. They might move off the Buffles Hook airstrip and come further south into Juma. It'd be amazing to catch up with them. Already excited for the sunrise safari tomorrow. Uh, Brandon, Panda. Pinda is very unique um, that it's seven different habitats, so lots of different areas. So sand forest, grasslands, uh, terminalia woodlands, lala palm felt, there was riverine, um, lots of different areas. So like a lot of different birds and things like that. And it's it's very unique to be within the, the northern parts of the Sabi Sands. Like I've never been to this part of the Sabi Sands, so really do enjoy spending time um, in the, the Sabi Sands. And the unique thing about Juma is that all the different characters, so I mean Tlalamba, Marips, all the different hyenas, some of the antelopes even maybe around camp have some names. So that's one of the unique things that I do really enjoy about Juma. It's also nice to learn a different reserve, learn some different roads, drive different riverbeds, and just be in a, a new area. I've got a, I really do enjoy adventuring, so it's been an adventure for sure. It's driving around Juma and bumping into or finding all these different and unique characters that they have. There are still a, a lot more characters that are I'm sure I'll get to see over the next week. Um, Jet, you wondering which leopards I still have on my wish list? I would have to say Tortoise Pan. He's definitely on my my wish list. Um, also Quarantine. I'd really like to see her. Uh, sorry, him. Uh, Ntsumi. I've heard that she's also a great one to see. Um, Shadulu, I think she was seen a little bit further west of our property. So there are still a couple of leopards that I would still like to see here on Juma. And then I would like to still catch up with Mohawk and his sons. Um, oh, for now, that's uh, all that I can really think of. But if I do have any more ideas of what other leopards I would like to see, I will definitely let everybody know. It does seem like this uh, drizzle is here to stay on Juma, just uh, as we rounded that corner, I was looking out to the east where this uh, storm is coming from. <laughs> Philippa, thanks very much. I'm glad you enjoy driving around Juma with me. I feel like you're sitting right behind me next to Panda on camera. 
And, and this is exactly what I'm like on a real safari. I mean, this is a real safari, but if I would have guests, it's uh, nice to just be chatting, not always bush related, but you see something and then boom, your focus is straight back onto the bush. And then it's a nice time also to get to know your guests and where they're from and tell them a little bit more about you, where you studied, how many brothers you have, how many sisters you have, where you grew up. So, Philippe, thanks very much. I'm glad you enjoy it. I was just saying that it does look like this rain is here to stay. This cyclone is, is coming from the east and out towards the east when I turned that corner it did look like there there was quite a lot of rain out in that side and it seems like Cedric has found those elephants I'm not too sure if they're the ones at the dam camp but why don't we send you over to Cedric thank you Chad yes we just found some rainforest elef elephants no, I'm just joking, just African elephants. But there's so much rain around here. But yay, at least we got some elephants right at the end. This is nice. One or two of them. There's a, a small little breeding herd. And it's just come through. Oh, the one is lying down. It is, I think. Paul? Yeah. That's cute. The little one is lying down. So I can't move too much. I don't want to give it a fright. But the youngster is just having a bit of a rest on the ground. It's like, thanks, Mom. Just make sure that you look out for any danger while I roll around in the sand. There we go. Oh, oh. Am I going to get up? Oh, no. no, I'm not going to get up now. I'm just going to lie here and feed on the grass. Thank you. That is so cute. And of course under the watchful eye of the older females. There we go. Are you going to get up? Yep, almost. Um, there we go. He's going to get up. Well, he's trying to. He's busy, he's busy crawling there now on the ground. <laughs> Okay, had, uh, had enough of uh, lying around. John, yes, they can. Like especially the the younger ones. Well, you'll find in uh, when the matriarch decides to stop somewhere and have maybe a 30, 40 minute uh, a snooze, and you'll find that you'll get the younger ones to lie down in the middle and then the older ones will actually be standing around those younger ones and also having a, a snooze while standing but the younger ones because they're much lighter the body's lighter it doesn't put that much strain on the internal organs compared to if you're a big elephant and you go lie down you know that weight is not going to be very pleasant you know you're not going to feel very comfortable as well as uh, you know getting up and standing up is uh, becomes a little bit more of a mission but for the younger ones, much easier. That's why many times you'll find younger ones will actually, or I mean, sorry, older ones will actually lean against trees while they sleep, or they'll lean against a termite mound. You know, it's a little bit easier just to kind of pop up again on your feet. Well, this has been quite. Uh, uh, quite a bit of rain this afternoon. Hmm. Yeah, they will still throw sand. I think they're not mud wallow, Grace. I think they're rather, because it's raining and their skin is wet, they'll try and uh, grab some sand and then they'll chuck it on their bodies, their body and all that, just to kind of, you know, stick against their body and just to keep them nice and cool and as well protect their skin from all the, you know, parasites. So, We'll do that, but I don't, they won't really go in mud wallow. Right, we can try and go a little bit further. With the, uh, we'll have to go a little bit forward. I'm missing out there. All right, let's go a little bit forward.
Oh, it's been a lot of rain. Oh, this one's coming onto the road. All right, don't worry. <laughs> Sorry. No, he's not coming. <laughs> Alright, uh, what's coming on right? What, uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. let's just go a little bit forward. Yeah. Alright. Oh, we've got like mini waterfalls. Mini waterfalls all over the show, yeah. Hello! Alright, we're just coming to stop here. Alright, we're just going to stop right here. Uh, behind the tree again. Oh, so, Paul, yeah. I feel bad. I think they'll have to try and move an inch forward, eh? Yeah. Yeah. I'll try and take a wide berth around here so it won't upset them too much. Uh, yep, don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, all right, there. There you are. <laughs> a lot of obstacles this evening. Rain, rain roof. Elephants. <laughs> but look at this, they're trying to dig up there now. So going for because the soil is so nice and soft now and wet. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to dig out the roots from some of these little trees and that. So they're using their feet and the trunk and digging all these holes around the trees. Getting to those nice roots. Watch it, watch how he uses his left foot there. Diggy diggy. There we go. Get that root out. You can do it. You can do it. Lovely. Cheetahs and other animals, yeah. Nice to have some elephants to end the drive. It's been quite a quite a tough afternoon with all this rain. Uh, the problem is, is this consistent rain. It just did not hold up at all, and I think it's going to be like that till. Till tomorrow afternoon. That is a typical cyclone, Filippo. The cyclone's name is Filippo that's coming in from the east. There we go, you can get in there. He's going to pull out a nice piece of root here, I can just see it. There it is, look at that. Oh! On safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our sunrise safari.
coming from the ground. Oh, look at that. Now that's going to be, that's exactly what that, uh, this youngster was looking for. He was looking for that piece of root. They're going to put it in their mouth and then they'll try and pull it sometimes with their, actually they'll try and pull it with their mouths. They'll kind of put it in their mouths and they kind of, uh, see if they can rip the rest of the root out. Out of the ground there. There we go. Put it in the mouth and uh, pull. There we go. Pull. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> it looked like I was like really struggling there. And uh, I'm glad I got that piece of root out. That's nice. And chewy, chewy. Chew. Yeah. Of course, what he's doing now, just eating this, the out, more the outskirts of that root than anything else. The area, the area that's got uh, pretty much most uh, nutrients in it, and then we'll just eat the outside. Doesn't want. There we go. Throw the rest away. Done. Done and dusted. Thank you. That was nice. It's almost like eating a, a you know a lollipop. You got the nice candy on the stick. Eat the lollipop, eat the candy, and then you just chuck the stick away. Oh, it's still got a little there. That piece of fruit is still there. No, it's like no, it's gonna be too tough, too difficult. Diane from the UK, no problem. You know, it's uh, it's always nicer to be out here in the bush. Yes, look, I think this. Uh, I don't mind a quick thunder shower. shower. Trust, don't mind a quick thunder shower. It's always nice. But when you got like a three hours when it's just constant rain and continuous rain, uh, continuous rain. Um, phew, yeah, then everything gets soaked. I mean, my socks. I think every, um, um, everything's wet. I'm just totally soaked. <laughs> But it's alright, it's always good just being out and a good way to end this afternoon's safari with a, a herd of elephants. Perfect way to stop us uh, in the sunset safari. Well, tomorrow morning's another day. I'm really hoping it's gonna just subside a bit. Oh, sorry, I do apologize about the pole there. It's a rain roof. I'll have to try and move aim, Paul. Yeah. Maybe, no. Oh, looks like the herd is moving away. And there they go. Alright, St. Paul, let's uh, go down the road. Maybe get our last minute leopard. You never know. Let's go. Let's go. <coughs> Thank you, elephants. That was nice. Nice to end off like that. <laughs> yeah. There's so much there's so much water on top of the rain roof as well. Like it's a whole lot of waterfalls here. African sunsets, yeah, it's always nice to have uh, animal company. Oh yes, always, always. Well, I'm hoping tomorrow morning is going to be great. Uh, I'm just, uh, uh, this, well, we're just looking at the weather. It still looks very rainy and all that tomorrow morning. So we just have to really prep ourselves and uh, get out there again and uh, crossing fingers, holding thumbs that we get some nice, exciting sightings. Never know what uh, the bush has in store for us tomorrow morning. Never know. But yeah, thanks so much for all the comments, for all the questions, and thanks so much for joining us on our sunset safari this afternoon. It was quite tough for us here on Juma with the rain, but it's never a problem. It's always good just to be out there. But yes, make sure that you do come and join us tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. 
Central African time for our sunrise safari and uh, let's see what we find tomorrow morning we might have some great surprises from the Wild Earth team from Paul and myself have a wonderful evening further goodbye